Okay, this is going to be the lesson on how to perform a within subjects or a repeated measures ANOVA. Um, we're going to start with the simplest, which is uh, essentially uh, a one-way repeated measures ANOVA, meaning that there is one independent variable, and the levels of those variables are repeated, that individuals are members of every level of uh, the variable. In this case, we have five columns. We have something called participant ID, and then four columns called time one, time two, time three, and time four. If we go into variable view, we can see that time one seems to be uh, the number of headaches individuals had per month prior to taking a medicine. Um, and then time two, three, and four are headaches uh, after one month with the medicine, uh, headaches after two months with the medicine, and after headaches after three months with the medicine. Um, so clearly uh, the hypothesis, if you, this is uh, from a drug company, that their medicine uh, effectively reduces headaches. Uh, and that is the hypothesis, the null hypothesis, is, of course, that there will be no difference between the number of headaches uh, over the course of the four different times. And because people are measured in time one, time two, time three, and time four, this is a repeated measures design. In order to do a repeated measures design, we're going to go up to Analyze, General Linear Model, and instead of univariate, we're going to go to Repeated Measures. Now, the first window that comes up in Repeated Measures asks us, what is the name of our within subjects factor? And we can name it anything we want. We're going to call it time. And then the next question is, how many levels does it have? How many ways does the time variable vary? And it varies four different ways, because we measure them four times. We'll hit Add, and then we'll hit Define. This new window comes up that looks a little bit more like the univariate analysis. And all we're going to do here is it's asking, what is the first level of our within subjects variable? Our first level is headaches time one per month then time two, time three, and time four. Now, we could run the analysis now, but there's a couple other things we can do. Let's click on plots, and let's graph our data. It goes in the horizontal axis. We'll hit add, and then continue. Let's also go to options. Let's get our overall means and our marginal means for time, and then let's also click on descriptive statistics, and let's even get estimates of effect size. And then let's hit okay. First box that comes up lets us know what is the what is our within subject factor and what are its levels. Our factor is time and the levels are time 1, 2, 3, and 4. Descriptive statistics is the next box. It lets us know the mean number of headaches per month at time 1, time 2, time 3, and time 4. By looking at the means it looks like people are having fewer headaches but that's not a statistical test. The next box is the multivariate box. This is not a box we need to worry about. I normally simply delete it. You can also just ignore it. I'm going to delete it in this case. The Macaulay's test sphericity is the same thing. You can ignore this box entirely, or you can simply delete it. This is the sum of squares uh, table that we've used to see in the univariate analysis. We're going to go to our within subject variable time. We're always going to look at the top column, which is sphericity assumed. It has three, three within subjects degrees of freedom. These are the 51 error degrees of freedom. The mean square is 16. The F is 9. And the significance value is less than 0 0.001. Meaning that the time that the groups do in fact differ based on time. That not all the time levels are the same. We would write this as F3, 51 equals 9.08, P less than 0 0.001. Because it's not actually a P value of 0. It's just rounding to zero. Uh, so it's actually less than 0 0.001, which is very small. Um, we can ignore the next box of within subject contrasts as well, um, and as well as the test of between subject factors, because we do not have a between subjects effect. These are our means for time, and this is our graph. Now let's say we wanted to find out, not just, all we know right now is that there is a general difference, but we don't know if if time one differs from time two. We don't know if two differs from three, or if three differs from four, or if four and two differ. We don't know this yet. We need to run post hoc analyses. The post hoc analysis, that, the easiest post hoc analysis to use in a repeated measure design is actually a paired sample t test. So all we're going to do is we're going to go to analyze, compare means, paired sample t test, and we're simply going to come up with all the combinations that you could have of these. So time one and time two, one and three, one and four, two and three, two and four, 
and then finally 3 and 4. If we hit OK, and we go all the way down here, we're going to be able to see that there are there's no difference between time 1 and time 2, but that after that, all of the groups differ except for the very, very last one. Pair five, uh, uh, t time uh, three and time four. Headaches after two months and headaches after three months. So in other words, if we go back up to our graph, these two points don't differ from each other, and these two points don't differ from each other. But all other possible combinations do, in fact, differ. This is how you run a repeated measures design.